Hey everyone, Sly47 here. I have a long form scripted video today. I really couldn't do this ad hoc due to the amount of information I wanted to say. So I wrote a script for this. Let me know how you like the style in the comments down below for potential future videos. So let this play in the background and listen. There's no face cam today. I'll have gameplay going in the background for those wanting it. I just, I, I had to write a script because there's a lot of information here and I really wanted to go in depth on this with all of my opinions and ideas. So please let me know how you like it down below. So for the last few events, the game has been a little rough. Whether it's lackluster rewards, grinds that are horrible, or just how it works is just not to almost anyone's likings. So I thought it'd be a great time to talk about my thoughts and create an event that both the players and Wargaming could like, or would like. Something that gets players playing more, and gets money in Wargaming's pocket, and gets the community a nice balance of discounted stuff and ways to enjoy an event to get back those players who have left the game. But I need to say something before. Look, I know many people don't like it, but gambling is a part of mobile gaming and the app industry, or even crates. It's a part of our ecosystem. I don't like it, but it's how you make money in this industry. And yes, I always want crates and bundles to always come together, always at the very least. But I hope you can understand this video is coming from a programmer business mind that has worked near games before and a gamer that understands there are some toxic issues in gaming these days. But they work. They work insanely well. And until a new pathway to your wallet comes out that makes it so game companies don't need to do these things, it's in Wargaming's best interest to keep doing these practices. So it's best to find a middle ground in my opinion. Something where gamers feel rewarded for their time, and the company is rewarded with our time and money. The old, old events couldn't keep going with free ships, and the events now can't keep going this way either. <laughs> they can't. So, we need to meet in the middle and create an event that Wargaming and the community would at least enjoy. Now, I'm going to come from the perspective of this event being a new ship coming out, so a bundle doesn't necessarily make sense at that time but it should come at a later point for people who don't want to gamble a little bit but i have a bunch of mechanics that i hope a lot of you love in this video or at least can kind of go i understand why wargaming would want to do this and why the community would want this better than where we are currently going to understand where we are we kind of need to go through some history. So let's first highlight some issues with the past events, which not gonna lie, was actually hard as hell to find event information on because so many recently have been so forgettable. Like the last event I remember actually enjoying a little bit was the Lennon event. And that was nine months ago when recording this video, nine to 10 months. That was the last event I can remember where we had a decent chance with a little luck of getting a ship for free or near free. Even that event was a bit boring since it was just a victory blitz, but the rewards and keys gave you just enough of a chance of a free tier 8 or a very heavily discounted tier 8. Which in reality is insane from a company's perspective. You just gave a free 40 to 50 dollars away for players who just happen to play enough and get just a little lucky, that can't help their bottom line. I would love for these to come back, but it just isn't feasible for a company to just give away free ships when ships are how they make their money mostly, especially new ones. Let's talk about the last two because they're clear as day to me and actually have a good bit of good and bad in them. Combining elements from each could net a good event for both sides. But I'm specifically talking about the Halloween event and the Anchored event, which is currently happening right now. It's almost done. The main thing Halloween had as a problem was a bit of grind and the rewards. The latter is the bigger problem in my opinion. Yes, we got new camos for older players, mostly in a crate. 
We did have the option to grab a few camos for free, including a tier 10 Henry camo. That was awesome. Credit where credit is due. But there were also awesome camos brought out with that Henry camo that should have been in the store as well. Why does the Henry get the love when someone could have ground out a little bit harder or tried to make sure that they were on top of it and got the Yamato camo for themselves? Next, during all of this, the grind, while doable, it was a lot over those days. If you miss one day, you can't finish. And some people have families, multiple jobs, etc., school. That shouldn't be that way, especially with events like the Halloween event where it's about skipping to a ship in a tech tree. The reward versus time should be competitive, not equal, but competitive to just grinding the ship's line in general during those days. I know there are players that play this game in an insane amount. We need to balance around them, but also don't forget that those players are also putting in the most hours to keep the community running and matchmaking short. Also, they're potentially in fleets, which keep the game alive as well, providing tournaments, games, gameplay, and camaraderie in a game like this, which in a mobile game, I'm not going to lie, a few years ago I didn't even think it would exist. But on to the Anchorage event. This was surprisingly disappointing, and after talking to the CC managers, it was clear to me this was not in their power. It, they fought, and they just tried to fix it before it came out. So please don't yell at Foodie or Bella. This was above them. This was this was levels above them. They are merely just facilitating and running the pages and making sure that they hear our support and giving it to the higher ups. But three medals or 12% of the way and a key is a horrible event to try to get people to spend money on a ship. It doesn't give us any reason to play for it. Even if it's the most amazing ship, the time investment is not worth it nor is the money on the crates. But getting back to my previous thought on the Halloween event, the event was something that I think is amazing, or the event has something that I think is amazing. The store had options. The Anchorage event was amazing. You got, if, if it was a good solid event and you were able to, let's say, collect, you know, so many tokens, you had an option to choose. Do you want to save up for the Anchorage or did you want to go for the Kronstadt, the Stigfried, or the Alaska? You had options. That's, that was amazing. That should always be there. And yeah, this was only a store for cruiser players. It's an L to other ship players, but those players should be able to look forward to events like this in the future that maybe have better mechanics. But the problem is the... Like, it didn't start with these two events. The events have kind of been going on for a while, and they've just been victory blitzes over a few days or every day. They have a crate, you get a few keys, or one, just to test your luck, to get enough tokens or medals. That's really been it. It's the same over and over again. It's boring, but what is worse, the rewards are getting harder to get due to bad practices from Wargaming's higher-ups. These bad practices are going against human psychology and player retention ideas throughout the industry. A good event will get players on the game, show them rewards they could get, and rewards they could just buy, thus giving the players option to spend money or time. Either way, you get the player on, giving those players that spend money people to play with, and players who don't spend money reasons to play with free rewards that help them or what they want. This has been seen in so many other massively successful games with battle passes events with free and paid rewards by playing or doing certain objectives in games. Activision might be in hot water, like lava, but Warzone has been stupidly successful by selling stuff to players by rewarding them with free rewards that give the player a reason to say, yes, I will give them money because I've played so much. Same thing with Warframe. If you don't know that game, it's awesome. The devs are freaking awesome. You play so much that when you get a discount, most players just buy it because they believe the developer is worth it, not the developer thinking they deserve the money from the player. Back to Blitz, I can't remember which event it was on 
but there have been a few that have had some good mechanics I want to pull from in this perfect event or this better event that I want to create. Whether it was changing up the amount of keys you can buy for crates, decent set rewards, the capability of choice, or enough side rewards for those who can't play much and for those who live on this game. We need to improve events because events should increase the players coming back because it's the time to play, not have players look at the event and log right off. So let's jump into what I'm thinking, how I'm thinking it should work from Wargaming's perspective, and then from the community's perspective. But first, hit that like button, subscribe, follow on any platform with the links down below, join the Discord server, and thank you to all the Patreon members for helping support the channel. If you want to help support the channel, link is below. Every little bit helps. Thank you for all, thank you all for making this channel happen, and all of you keep this entire process and time that I put in and streaming a blast. And I can't thank you all enough. I literally wrote a nine page script for this <laughs> this video <laughs> and it felt like nothing. And I don't think I ever would have said that in life writing a nine page paper. <laughs> so thank you again. So for this event, here are my requirements or parameters for building this. I'm going to be taking mechanics and ideas from multiple events and situations in the game in order to allow all this to be done by currently implemented systems within the game. Nothing new so that Wargaming can just do this via the current powers within their CMS or the content management system they probably have in their game. For people who don't know the content management system, think of it like a dashboard that controls the, the app in general, shows you what's available, what's not, and controls the servers along with what we see, what deals are available, and how it ties to the Play Store or the App Store's in-game items. And that's how occasionally you might get one where they, oop, they accidentally didn't put an extra zero, and now all of a sudden there's a bunch of crates for really cheap. <laughs> so. That's a content management system. Just think of it as a dashboard that they that gives you all the control from the elements of, of the game that are capable in the situation there at that time. I'm going to be living within the current constraints of most of their events, but giving the event further capabilities to allow for better player access to rewards, push players to play different types of ships, and offer challenges to push even the top players, but still offer the average player rewards. Let's break it down into how this would work. Wargaming loves their token system and metal system, so we will keep with that. Let's create a hypothetical ship that almost anyone wants. Specifics don't matter, just think of a ship you would want at tier 8. It's a solid ship, nothing crazy, but in the right situations, it can be a load of fun, plus maybe carry the team. Roma level, Richie level type of thing. It's going to cost 20 medals to get. That will be the baseline. You will, you will be able to acquire medals and tokens just as usual. So nothing crazy. I'm trying to stay within parameters. How much you play will dictate how much you get out from the event. We have a store with the ship and more rewards to talk about later. The reward tree will be talked about later as well, uh, but should still live within similar param uh, parameters depending on the event and how much Wargaming wants to give us. But I'm going to stick with the store mostly for this philosophy talk and this event style talk because, in my opinion, it's more applicable to more events over the year. So let's get into Wargaming's side of this. We need to talk shop. So I'm going to preface this with a warning. I'm coming now in this section from a business perspective. Some of you will not like this section since it sounds predatory as all get out. And this is how these companies need to think and are thinking right now. So, okay. Warning Omer. Bleh, over. Jesus, can I talk? <laughs> this is a limited event. For one week, Wargaming is granting access to acquiring this new ship, giving players the ability to not only get it, but to get it on a discount compared to players who aren't able to play right now. According to human psychology, Wargaming is going to give us a stick with a reward on the end. Something to entice us to play and get back on if we haven't in a while. This new ship is mighty good and people want it, aka the carrot. Now, they can't give it to us. We gotta work for it a little bit. Wargaming could just offer a bundle for the ship and a crate and be done with it. But they know what they have, so they're gonna make us play and want us, or want us to get excited for this new ship and have an event. 
they will also be thinking more eyes on the game means more ways to sell us other things while we're on. They are also, from a company's perspective, going to know that gambling is the highest money maker in mobile gaming. So a crate will be offered for players to get medals to spend on the store. The dopamine hit the human mind gets from opening crates and having a chance of getting a ship is addicting. It's why multiple nations don't allow it for games that market towards children. <laughs> Seriously, look it up. But let's kind of take the Anchorage event. That stick can't be so far it discourages us from getting the carrot. It needs to be enough length to have us work for it, but have to put out a little money to get in that time investment in as well. We need to get the carrot close enough to reach for it, but long enough away that we need to purchase something to get it. Sorry, free ships aren't a thing unless Wargaming's feeling generous. And on a new ship, sorry. I'm gonna side with Wargaming on this. So Wargaming has a reward at the end of the stick. How do we get it? In order to once again get us excited, Wargaming has give it, gives us a bit more human psychology games to entice us even more. They will give us 40 to 50% of the medals if we play enough as a base. We are already almost there, but there will be many events for certain parts of the event that we, if we get on and complete, they'll get us over that 50% mark and maybe even to the 60% of the way done. Now, Wargaming isn't just pushing players to play the event, but minor pushes during parts of the event. If a player is already over 50% there, the ship is easier to get than to throw away the progress, i.e. the sunk cost fallacy now taking action. You have the bait, you have the reason to play, challenge to do at certain times, and over 50% there, it's mighty enticing. Business might view this as 40-60% to 60 loss in revenue, but this is another tactic that Wargaming knows about. I know they know, they've done this in past events, where you have the players playing your game, you make up the quote unquote lost revenue by selling them other things while they are on. You might know this tactic from movie theaters or ballparks. Once they get you in that, that cheap ticket, sell you that overpriced bottle of water or yummy salty popcorn to make up the difference. But this entire process is also trying to get players who don't normally spend money to spend money. Throw us half what it typically costs for a new ship, play a little bit, and you get this brand new ship all while showing us a variety of ships for full price or discounted ships to push players to give wargaming their money for that ship over those other older ships that don't sell want sell much or they don't want the whales we don't need to worry about in this situation because we're going to have a crate and we're going to have it offering metals the whales are just going to slam down 50 bucks 100 bucks roll those crates for metals and buy whatever they want they will have their fun. These events aren't for those who have the money. These events are to get new whales. These events are to pull the young people to say, yeah, I spent the time. I played all week. A few bucks, grind is over, and I get the reward. Or a kid tells her parents that they got so far and it's on a discount. Everybody likes a good discount. Have you ever seen Black Friday in America? Adding in to this entire thing is daily keys we get, either from the store or missions. These keys offer us a chance and get us into that gambling mood. Show us we have more chances to get closer to our goal. Now, statistically, we're gaming. We'll want to have the crates give players 0 to 20% closer to the goal. So the players who want it, who play enough, those players giving the community short matchmaking times, well, besides after four or five and all the bots, but I digress. The players that keep the community alive, a massive discount for a short period on this solid ship. Why? Because many of these players will never put money into this game for full price. They will, if you can get them to put any money down, that is what you want to get. Because in the mobile industry, it's about acquiring whales and once someone puts some money down on a game they put more but if they don't put any money down they're still usable by keeping the game alive and you want to reward them for the play time that they have in these events where you're supposed to crunch and play more the players who can't play so much 
you've given them about a 30 to 50% discount with playing moderately and keys giving them some medals as well. You get to show them a nice little discount in the store for that ship. Players who play very little but still want that ship, well, here's the last stick for those stingy whales. And they've done this in the past and it's worked on me and I hate how well it works because it's a well-known way of doing it. <laughs> the last two days of the event, Wargaming puts up the medals to buy. This allows for those to get the ship plus the nice discount for playing. A player has played all week. Get 60% there. Awesome. Here's a discounted tier rate that you want because you played during that event. Unlocking it for 5, 10, 20 bucks, something like that, depending on your luck. That's awesome. That's great. But by the way, this discount runs in 24 hours to 48 hours. FOMO is finally in action. The stingy whales just buy the tokens and get the get the little discount that the tokens offer if they didn't play. But if they did play, they get a very nice discount. And that can be very good for your bottom line. Add in, you make up all of that quote-unquote lost revenue from selling other ships and items people want in the store, in the regular store. You used during that entire week to make people realize how good of a discount that you're giving them on that main ship. I'm talking only put up ships, 15, 20% discount, something small, nothing crazy. Just to get people to realize how big of a discount they're getting from this brand new ship coming out. Because you're not going to sell it for a few months. And this event is early access to it. Now all of this is just a win-win on both sides. So let's get in the community side and what this event actually looks like now that we've talked about the psychology and what wargaming wants to accomplish during it what is this event that hits everything wargaming needs to do to make money and get people playing look like let's go over it first is a victory blitz it's super easy to understand players know it and how it works it it it's a decent event you don't want to do an insane amount of games over multiple days you want to do a small amount every day. I don't have the data, but I'm betting those events with 100 plus wins in a week didn't get much player engagement in the groups that they wanted. We should have 10 wins a day, in my opinion. We should get tokens on every win, a key at five wins, and a medal at 10 wins. So we should have seven medals if we play each and every day of the event, or 35% of the way to the ship that we want. Every game, we should also get some tokens, so players should never feel like they didn't make some progress, especially in a victory blitz. Let's say every day you get 2,000 tokens from those 10 wins in the victory blitz. If you have an average 50% player, it would take 20 games netting them another 9,000 to 14,000 tokens from playing decently in most games. That is a medal, a key, and... 2,900 to 3,400 tokens a day with a potential 20 games, give or take a few hundred tokens. So roughly 20,300 20, to 23,800 tokens for the entire event just from the Victory Blitz and games played. Now keep that in mind, okay? This is, this is where we're going to get a lot of stuff, and I'm going to put the script down below with all the information so you can see it. Second, we are going to utilize those Blitz challenges that, in my opinion, are underutilized in Blitz. One Blitz challenge will span, will span, if I can talk, the entire week and net over two medals, 5,000 tokens, credits, blueprints, and two more keys. These challenges will not have any wins on them. They will be all damage, module, kills, captures, etc. These should be considered at the weekly level missions of difficulty. But with you playing so much, these will be consistently getting done over the week. This will be giving players constant feelings of progression. Plus, they might have missions that they also can do the same thing on, so more progress while playing, working on other parts of the game, win-win. Which is great for players, really. Just this challenge removes the annoyance of a bad team or one bad play that ruins the ability to win a match. A loss is not seven minutes of lost time now, you still move the needle forward, towards your goal, which prevents a dopamine drop in players when they are on a losing streak because everyone decides the cap is 
politics at the holiday table or religion on the first date. So whether it's a store or reward tree, the tokens will be used at this place. You obviously will have the ship everyone wants, an option to buy a max of, in my opinion, a max is needed, I know, two keys a day for 1,500 to 3,000 total for of tokens for the keys. The crate should include tokens, medals, and usual blueprints and boosters. It should not contain the ship. What you want to try to do is try to get the medals being the currency. Let's say the player gets lucky, gets additional medals. They can purchase the camo for that ship for five more medals as well. If the player can't play much, they then can buy the camo. So when Wargaming eventually sells the ship again, they can buy it and slap that camo on it. Adds a reason later for players to put money into the game. Now, just from those two events above, the player has around 25,000 to 28,000 tokens, give or take a few thousand, depending on how well they play and how much they play. This covers the cost of 21,000 worth of two keys a day and then some. Let's talk about the rewards. There will always be some players who don't want a particular ship. So in this shop, Wargaming should also always offer three to five other ships for various amounts of metals. You should be older ships, some that don't sell well or some that do, but are over the number of tokens that players can get from the event base-wise. Spread it out a few tiers, offer a few ships of different types. This allows for collectors to pick up a few ships or free-to-play players to have a chance at getting a free premium for small amounts of money. In the reward store, we should always be able to buy large and medium boosters of credits, XP, Captain XP, and free XP. This is for people who already have all their ships and they just need them for grinding. Be a great way to, great way to get them. A temporary camo or two can be thrown as well. Just for those who have extra tokens to use, maybe an hour of premium if you're feeling feisty. To give an example, we have our tier 8 ship we want, a tier 7 and 8 tier battleship that costs 18, a 7 to 8 cruiser that costs 15, a 6 to 7 destroyer that costs 15, and then two collector ships that are 12 and 10 respectively. Something like the Mikasa or something, you know, something that's like, hey, I got these extra tokens, whatever. Or, you know, obviously maybe you can do them even lower than 10 and 12, but this is just, I'm just throwing numbers out with relative accuracy in my opinion, but whatever. This offers everyone a goal. Also offers a chance to spend money on medals to unlock those ships at the later time in the event. Medals should in general give a 10 to 25% discount in comparison to overall money for these ships. So they are a deal compared to regular times, but nothing crazy. Wargaming still needs to make money. Next, offer the camos for these ships for 10 to 20,000 tokens. This then forces the player's choice. Choice, if I can talk. <laughs> Do you keep buying crate keys or you save up for camos for the ship? I would also love to see elements in the shipyard and stores too, but I wouldn't mind this being an event on its own as a mineral rush event or something. Could be awesome to help us get those ships in the shipyard before or after a rotation, but that's for another time. Then we have all the boosters and camos. So if you're feeling feisty, throw a captain in as well. During the last two days of the event, Wargaming should sell a 1, 5, or 10 metal pack that can be purchased as much as the player wants. These tokens should once again give the players a 5-20% to 20 discount in terms of cash in compared to the shops with real money. So hey, the player has Christmas money they can spend on, slap a few extra medals on the account, and you grab the ship that you want, or multiple ships for a nice discount, or in reality get those last few medals that you didn't get from the crates to unlock that tier 8 that you really want. Since we're only going to be giving 9 to 11 medals. So let's do crap. Eh, let's recap. Can I talk today? No, probably not. <laughs> oh, why do you guys deal with me? Okay, so we have a store or a reward tree. We have 110 to 130% amount of tokens given out at base to purchase two keys a day and then some. This gives some wiggle room for those who can't play every single day. 30 to 40% of medals from the victory blitz. 10 to 20% of medals from the Blitz Challenge from the Weekly One. Together, this will close the player in on 50% of the ship's cost, or close to. A 
store with an option for all ship types at different tiers and costs, camos for those ships for tokens. A store with boosters, camos, captains, and maybe a portrait. Eh, maybe premium if they're feeling, feeling fun that day. The last day of the event, the ability to purchase medals should exist to finish the grind. That way, if you want the ship and you played and you were at the event, you got a nice discount for it. Which, for our time, that should be how it should work. I know people want those free ships again. It doesn't make sense to their bottom line and it doesn't make sense business wise. But what does make sense is giving people heavy discounts for their time in a limited event fashion so that p players feel rewarded for consistently getting on the game and playing during those events. They want to bring us back. So in my opinion, this right here hits that criteria. But I've said a few things before, and I'm going to add a kicker idea to this. So let's get into the kicker. So we know the base of the event. The kicker events that will fix the problem from the Halloween event, in my opinion, and throw the metal amount over that 50% bar, because we got seven just from the Victory Blitz and two from the Weekly Blitz. How do we get over to that 60% mark that I talked about earlier, that 50 to 60? So <laughs> this was the problem with the Halloween event a little bit with the grind. So forcing players to play ships they don't typically play is great for companies in the end. It helps players find what they like or what they don't like. Try out new things, maybe prevent the game from getting stale. They get them out of their element and keep players playing and keep players potentially putting money into the game. As much as some players absolutely hate it, I'm sorry, you can't play Aroma all the time. You can't. You need to learn to play other ships. But tying it to victories is problematic in nature. If a player is already out of their element, you need to reinforce them to play better and not punish them for trying something new. If they get a bad team, let's say they get a bad, you know, hey, they push just a little too far and end up dying too early. That's not fun. And you're already pushing them out of the element, so they're already agitated and adverse to the situation. You need to give them a reason to play it and a reason to excel at it. So you fix this once again with blitz challenges again i know i know i love them <laughs> but for these events and for these blitz challenges they are semi-daily like two to three during an event maybe four but obviously they can decide these will include one to two ship classes similar to the halloween event 10 levels no victories once again you already have the victory blitz today you need to do this they will offer an additional medal enough tokens for a key Mission tokens, potentially, credits, and other small things that, you know, Wargaming typically throws in, stuff like that. These will be short blitzes, a 24-hour blitz to give players a way to earn one more medal for the event, but you need to play a certain type of ship. Enough tokens to work towards maybe another camo or rewards. Obviously, you can buy a key with it. So, that's how I would move with that. But these are these blitzes are the do twenty thousand damage in a game, two modules, an MV an MVP in game types. These are easy to do as you're doing your victory blitz. But the idea is to push people out of their comfort zone, yet give them rewards to push them into something new for just a little bit, but not too long. They get their wins during these battles, they move the needle on this, the victory blitz on that day, and potentially the weekly blitz. So they are always moving towards that goal of what they want of a nice heavy discount on a ship or maybe even multiple ships that they want. So this seems like a lot at once, but if players can get used to it, all of a sudden they realize that, hey, today, today is just victories day. Today's just victories and, and our weekly. I'm working towards it. Great. If I lose, I still work towards something on the weekly. Perfect. Awesome. All of a sudden, the next day, Wargaming puts up a post. Hey, by the way, today, it's destroyers. Destroyers and get an extra token. You push yourself for that, but you have to play a DD. 
or something like that, or you have to play a cruiser, or you have to play a battleship, or God forbid they make it a, a carrier game day. But please don't. Please don't do carriers. People hate carriers. But, of course, what that does is now, not only are you pushing people to get on during an event, you're pushing them to get on during certain parts of the event and get out of their comfort zone, but just for a day. That's crazy. All right. Just simple. Here's a little short little blitz. You get an extra token if you if you go a little bit out. Some people will say, hey, no, I'll make up that metal, or I've made up that metal in a crate. Or I'm just going to buy it later. But there's other players that are going to be like, I want the biggest discount possible. Screw it. I'm playing DDs today or something. So in my opinion, this offers a variety of gameplay, pushing people in the right direction to other ships, and also you're constantly moving forward on other missions all at once, getting just thrown awards or rewards at your face. If you ever watch someone play in the first few days of like a Call of Duty season, they are chucked reward after reward after reward to get the dopamine high, and then they taper off after the end. And such. And that's how Activision should do it. In this game, it's more we want to set up the option and then go, okay, yeah, you can keep on going, but also I'm going to give you options to buy this stuff. <laughs> I'm going to give you this option at the last moment to buy stuff while you know, hey, maybe you can't play the last day. Now you're going to have to buy a, buy a medal or two. You want to push people to buy that stuff. You want to push people to do that. But also because it's been so rewarding, you're giving us reasons to put money into the game. Making us have faith that, hey, this event is fun. We're actually being given rewards. We're actually given a chance at a heavy discount at this. Because why? Because we play the game. And that might not seem enough to many companies these days, but our time actually means something. Some of us have families, careers, pets. No one's having kids these days. I'm just kidding. Kids. You have to help take care of that. Sometimes you can't play. You have to give the reason for us to put the money in so that we can give you money later to go, hey, you want to know what? This was fun. So let's recap instead of recrap from earlier. <laughs> Out of all this, let's say you play the entire event. You're getting 9 to 11 medals, depending on if you've completed the missions for that day. Maybe even 12 medals if they're feeling feeling nice. Two crate keys a day, netting a majority of users probably one to three medals if they play every single day. So 10 to 14 medals towards the ship or even just a little bit more, giving the player who plays all week a 50 to 70% discount on a ship once the medals come on sale. All while you're doing that, the player also has to be judging whether or not how to spend those tokens. Do you keep on risking it and try to get those more medals out of it? Or do you go for camos, boosters, icons, captains, stuff like that? You now have choices on how you want to play this event. Do you want to play it safe, get the camos, buy the ships later, whatever? Or do you want to get those medals? You want to risk it and get a higher discount when the, when the medals come on sale later that week. You only maybe need a five, ten bucks or something like that into buying a tier eight. Because you wonder what you've been playing all week. 10 games a day, weekly blitz, maybe even the daily blitzes. That's a lot of time investment. Let's at least make it rewarding and make it make sense. So in my opinion, just from this, it's a win-win. Because we get a nice discount on ship. Playing for tons of rewards constant movement towards our goals selling players other ships while some people are going for this one ship so we have options and such and at the end almost everyone's gonna need to probably put a little bit of money into this so you net potentially more people putting money into the game because if it's a ship they want heck yeah Throw 20 bucks at you, say I got a 50% discount on a ship that I wanted, a new Roma, a new Richie, people are going to do it, because it's only for a short time right now. But it's a win-win in my opinion. So I said a while back I'd get to the reward trees. So rewards can be done via reward tree as well within this parameters. It's just in my opinion some things need to be changed up to make it 
kind of almost coexist with stores or at least kind of align up with stores. So in my opinion, we should out of a reward tree, we should always get enough tokens from the weekly blitz and from the victory blitzes that we have to get enough tokens to get us to the end, quote unquote, the end of a tree. And potentially another portion of a tree with the daily blitzes if people decide to do that. But in my opinion, tokens should be used to move around the overall reward tree, but metals should be used to purchase the significant items. They're completely separate currencies. And then also in my opinion, if, you know, hey, the ship's at the end of this reward tree, the camo for it should actually be right behind it. But of course, some people will want it before. It's a hard one in my opinion to decide. In my opinion, it should be at the end. So basically it's like, hey, I played a bunch, buy the rewards, boom, boom. All of a sudden, massive dop dopamine hit. I got the ship and the camel, woo! And such. It's a slight change of rewards compared to the store. Obviously, I think re re uh, reward trees have actually been pretty good in the past overall, but I feel like the amount of tokens and metals and that type of system could be altered to make it more appealing in the future. So just a more focused version of the store, but less or more of the same thing with the event, how it's run. All of these thoughts that I've listed out and I've given parameters get people to play during the event. It encourages people to play during the event. We have multiple events throughout the week where players are much more rewarded than normal. We have the promise of a great discount for a ship we want. We have multiple ways to earn medals. We also have multiple human psychological reasons to spend money at the end of the event. We have a guarantee we can get the event, even if we miss a day or so, if we throw a little dough your way. We have rewards that hit everyone's niche and players get more excited than normal because this is the time to play. You want this amazing ship? You gotta get on now. In Wargaming, you should be offering daily deals during this event. The players are on, sell them stuff. Give them options, give them reasons to spend money on this game. I would even go about selling ships with medals included or even have a thing where if you buy something from the store, you get a medal as well. Get most players to 9 to 12 medals by their own actions of playing. Potentially 1 to 3 more from crates via keys. Sell them medals at the end of the event. I'm betting you will make bank. Players will get on because it's a hell of a deal. Lots of rewards during this time. Lots of things to do. Plus... There could be other deals on other ships they want during that time that you could be putting up. Having the camos there might get the player to buy a ship for full, play, uh, full price later because they didn't get the medals during the event, but bought the camo for it instead. The Anchorage event where we could only get three medals and one key is in the wrong direction. You got us 12% of the way. That is 12% I could care less about. It was so easy to not care about the Anchorage event because my brain immediately said, the grind isn't worth it. The carrot was being held too far away from me. Why should I go for it? And I'm a cruiser main. This is an event for me. And you didn't even get me to 20%? <laughs> oh man, there could be so many jokes on that. But I'm gonna keep, keep get back on script, get back on script, fly. You need to at least give us the carrot close enough to go for it. Else, we just won't. You can't hype us up for a ship and event when the event almost gives us 0% of getting it in our minds. There's no point to play then. This event, this big hype. Hey, look, Anchorage is in the game. Woo. How do I get it? I'm going to give you 12% and a key. Woo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rant over. This is probably longer than it should have been. Oh, man. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, join the Discord for more. Links are down below. Thank you to the patrons for the support. Let me know in the comments down below what your th thoughts are on this. Remember, Wargaming does need to make money. 
but they also need to give us reasons to put our money with them. Reasons to say, yeah, they deserve this money because of a fun event or a rewarding event. A fun time playing with friends in this game, having stupid moments in bad ships or crushing games in good ships. Without some good faith from them, most players will not support this game and it will go downhill, which I don't want to happen because I enjoy this game. It is a fun game. It's a fun mobile game that I put 8,000 plus games in. Jesus, that's a Five, six years ago, no one would ever say you'd be putting this much time in a mobile game. But even if some of these ideas make it to Wargaming and come up in future events, awesome, because we'll be going in the right direction, a direction towards making events better and actually fun for the community. An actual event where we have stuff to do, we are constantly moving forward, and we are able to potentially because we're playing at that time, get an awesome ship for a heavy discount that later on players will, new players specifically, will say, man, I wish I was around for that event. And they're going to stick around and play because they're waiting for that next event that all of a sudden offers them that awesome discount that they saw everyone else get. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening to this. If you're if you're listening to this still in this entire thing, you're in Banff. I'm a badass motherfucker. So thank you. Y'all are awesome. Hope y'all have a good one. Peace.